ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونستفضيه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد فيا أيها الإخوة الكرام مر بنا الحديث عن قصص سورة الكهف من قبل وكل قد تناول هذه السورة من زاوية فمنهم من قال إنها معرض للفتن فتنة الاضطهاد الالتزام إذا التزم الإنسان فإنه يفتن في دينه وإذا أعطي من المال فإنه يفتن بماله ثم إنه يفتن بعلمه ثم إنه يفتن بسلطانه وهذه هي قصة الرابعة ومنهم من رآها معرضا للأساس الذي يبنى عليه مجتمع مسلم قوي يبنى على الأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر ممثلا في أصحاب الكهف ويبنى بالمال الصالح للعبد الصالح ويبنى بالعلم النافع وكذلك يبنى بالسلطان الوازع وقد ورد إن الله يزع بالسلطان ما لا يزع بالقرآن The brothers will continue with the story the last one mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf There are four main stories mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf and everyone view them from different angle. I mean, scholars will be viewing them from different angle. Some will view them as a fitna, as trials and tests, examples of trials and tests. And they said the first one is persecution when you try to follow your religion in an environment which, which is averse to it. Then you will suffer and you have to have patience. The next one is wealth. When you are given money, that's another test and trial, and you have to do well. The third one is knowledge as well. You may have knowledge, but it may not be a beneficial one. It may be a means of fitna. The fourth one is power, when you are given power. It's the fourth fitna as well. Some others view it as foundation. Foundations for a good Muslim community, which is the one I was talking about. How to build up a good Muslim community, cohesive one. It is by commanding good and forbidding evil, which is represented by the youth in the cave who would try to start change the evil, then they couldn't, then they ran away by themselves. At least to keep to give a chance for the truth, for haq to survive. The next one was uh, the second foundation is wealth. And we quoted the prophets saying. What a good wealth for a good man, in a good hand, that's the meaning. And that's what we look for. Good wealth, not from haram sources, and it is used by a good person who is well-oriented to support the truth and to establish the religion of Allah. The third one was knowledge, and that is a knowledge which has a fruitness, the fruit of humbleness, the fruit of practice, the beneficial knowledge. And then today we have the fourth one, which is power. When you have power in the right hand, that is as Dhul Qarnayn himself said at the end of the story, that's a mercy from Allah. If the power is in the wrong hand, you look around in the war, and you see the casualties of war, you see the damage, the mass destruction everywhere. everywhere. Because power is not in the right hand. Because power is in the hands of the people who believe they can get above what Allah created. 
who believe maybe that they can do what Fir'aun said. لعلي أطلع إلى إله موسى وإني لا أظنه كاذبا. فرعون said he asked Haman his minister to build for him a high building, a high edifice. Why? He wants to go up and see if there is God or not. So that's the people who are self-deceited by power, and that's the outcome. Let's go into this story of Dhul Qarnayn, and before going into this, we will follow, follow the way of the Quran. The way of the Quran of mentioning the stories is no is so far from personalizing. Personalizing the story means means it would be limited. The Quran mentioned a story. It didn't give any of the surrounding circumstances more than needed. It doesn't even mention which age, which place. The names of the characters in the story are not mentioned, unless it's necessary to mention. So, Allah said in Surah Al-Kahf, وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ We have given people in this Quran every example. So the story is just an example. And mentioning the names and the characters of the story makes it more subjective than objective. So what matters here is what happens, the behavior you do, if you are in that situation. So Dhul Qarnaini, his name is not mentioned. He's, not, he's definitely not Alexander the Great. So we I don't like to go into this, which is mentioned by people who don't know, and try to find something funny by mentioning things about Dhul Qarnayn, his name, or Ya'juj and Ma'juj and this stuff. Ya'juj and Ma'juj also are mentioned in this story as two corrupted tribes who do evil on earth. The second time they are mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Anbiya. There is no lot about this is given in the Quran. However, you find some brothers who are so busy to learn what others did not know about them and try to dig even in the Bible or in the old books to find something new. We are not supposed to do so. What we are supposed to do is just to follow what the Quran said, learn the lesson and forget about everything else. Dhul Qarnayn. Al Qarnayni literally means the two horns. And scholars explained it to mean, some said he has like two, something like bunny tails, or that's how he dressed his hair, or whatever they said. But Wallahu A'lam, it means he is the one who went to, so far to the east and so far to the west. He is the one who had power so far to the east and west. So that's enough to explain Dhul Qarnayn. And Allah only knows what it really means. Anything else does not matter. Allah said, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِلْ قَرْنَيْنِ قُلْ سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا إِنَّا مَكَّنَّا لَهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا So they ask you, O oh Muhammad, as well, because this was not the first question. They asked him two questions before this. And this is the third one. They ask you as well about Dhul Qarnayn. Say, I will give you some accounts on him. Allah said, Inna makkanna lahum fil ard. We have given him power. We have established him in land. So, he has the political power now. And Allah said, Allah gave him ways to do things. Ways to explore. Ways to go east and west. Ways to enforce his plans. وَأَتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا And he would follow these ways until حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَغْرِبَ الشَّمْسِ Until he reached the place where the sun sits. Actually, where the sun sits, the sun sets is what appears to you. No need to go into, until today even, with all the scientific findings, we still say sunrise and set. And it does not rise and it does not set. It's just a language. So at least this is what appears to him. So Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَغْرِبَ الشَّمْسِ وَجَدَهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئَةٍ وَوَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا قَوْمًا So he reached all the way to the west. That's the meaning of it. He, he, he traveled so far to the west. And then he had full power. He had full choice, like every other king in his place. 
He had the right to loot, to do as these evil people did, gang raping prisoners of war. He could do whatever he likes. What did he choose to do? He said, So that's his policy. That's his way of ruling over these people. He said, anyone who does wrong will be punished. Then when he returns to his Lord, so that tells you this man is a mu'min. He believes in Allah. So that's why he is motivated to administer justice on earth. And we see this also when we were talking about knowledge. When you take knowledge, when you learn and teach and practice, you all the time you are aware you are a servant of Allah. You have a message. You have a mission. You are following instructions of your Lord. So that's his way of governing. Anyone who does wrong will be punished. Anyone who does good, he's, he's doing well, doing good, following the law of justice, he will be rewarded. He will be also, he will have incentives to keep do, do, doing, he will be rewarded. وسنقول, will make his life easy. And that's what the Prophet said. The best Amir, the best Imam, leader, is the one people, his people love and he loves them. And the Prophet made a dua for the one who makes people easy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make his life easy as well. And the one who makes people's life hard, that Allah makes his life hard as well. So this one he says, وَسَنَقُولُ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِنَا يُسْرَى That's one occasion mentioned in the Quran. The second one, he went, ثُمَّ أَتْبَعْ سَبَبًا So he followed another way. حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَطْلِعَ الشَّمْسِ This time he is going towards the east. مَشْرِقْ مَطْلِعَ الشَّمْسِ so, so far to the east, where Allahu Alam. We don't know, we do not need to know even. حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سترا. He found it, the sun rising on some people who have no shelter against it. So what does this mean? And there is no lot mentioned about these people here. So nothing happened between him and these people as mentioned in the Quran. It's only, he came across these people in his travel, while he was traveling. And he found, it could be, scholar said, could be some people who had such a primitive life. So, they didn't have any shelter against the sun. Or maybe, they did not have any clothes to cover them from the sun. Or maybe, he went so far to the north, or to that, these countries, where the sun keeps rising for months. So Allah Alam, what it means. But it's something, it's a wonder of the wonders faced by Dhul Qarnayn. And then what? ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ بين السدين He came to two barriers and he found وجد من دونهما قوما لا يكادون يفقهون قولا He found some people who can nearly speak or communicate who can hardly com communicate. Some people who can hardly communicate could be because it's a different language. Most likely, it's a different language. But these people are in trouble. He can feel it. He can see by his eyes these people are in trouble. They are trying to communicate a message to him. And it was an excuse for him to say to himself, I don't know what they say. I don't, I don't want more trouble. That's enough. But he tried and he insisted and he could understand by any means what these people tried to say to him. They have complained about these two tribes, Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Those people who do evil, who cause corruption, mischief on earth, in the land. So it looks like they are their neighbors and they are coming to them from behind the mountains. And every time they come, they cause a lot of damage to their lives and to their wealth. And they do every evil. Mufsiduna fil ardi. That's the word of the Quran. 
Shouldn't we give you a reward, a money? We'll give you some money. For what? In return, what he will do? He will build a barrier, a wall between these people and the Ajuj and Majuj from the other side. <coughs> so, what did he answer? He said, ما مكنني فيه ربي خير. What my Lord, what Allah gave me is better than what you offer me. Doesn't this remind us with someone else who was given both wisdom, prophethood, and kingdom, power? That's Sulaiman When he was offered a bribe, a bribe to leave the people of Sabah alone, worshipping what they worship. He said to them, أتمدونني بمالين? Are you offering me money? فَمَا آتَانِيَ اللَّهُ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا آتَاكُمْ What Allah gave me is much better than what you offer me. So this man said to them, Lulqarnayn, he said the same. I'm not looking for your money. I'm not looking to build up my kingdom, my glory, my reputation by sucking your blood. That's actually what the great powers and sovereign powers do today. So he said, مَا مَكَّنِّي فِيهِ رَبِّي خَيْرٌ فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةٌ Just give me a hand, so like the manpower. I need labor, people to work. I will use my technology. But you provide manpower. قَالَ فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةٍ أَجْعَلْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ رَدْمًا So they asked for a barrier, and that could be a wall. A wall which could keep these people secure for maybe a few years, and then it will be the other side will be dug from the other side. A hole will be pierced from the other side. But Dhul Qarnayni, he did a good job. He said, I will make Radmi. <coughs> Radmi means he will fill all the gap. All the gap between the two mountains. He, Radman, you can say it as a fortified, fortified uh, dam, fortified barrier, fortified wall. Very thick one. And you will see how by the way mentioned by the Quran. He said, Atuni Zubar al Hadid. Give me the sheets of iron, pieces of iron. So, first, he filled all the gap between the two mountains with iron. He built a wall by iron and copper. And then, Atuni Zubar al Hadid, Hatta Ida Sawa Bain al Sodafain, Yanimala Ama Bain al Jabalain. So, he filled the valley between the two mountains with iron and copper, these two metals. And then what? And then he started fire, huge, massive fire. Until Allah said here, قَالَ أَتُونِي زُبَرَ الْحَدِيدِ حَتَّى إِذَا سَاوَى بَيْنَ الصَّدَفَيْنِ قَالَ انْفُخُ حَتَّى إِذَا جَعَلَهُ نَارًا يعني جعل الحديد متقدا مثل النار يعني درجة الصهار وزيادة انصهر الحديد قال آتوني أفرغ عليه قطرة صب عليه نحاثا نحاسا فماذا حدث هذه السبيكة القوية جدا من الحديد والنحاس قال الله فما استطاعوا أن يظهروا يعني ما استطاعوا أبدا أن يتسلقوا هذا هذا الجدار ولا استطاعوا أن ولا وما استطاعوا له نقض فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقضا so what he did he filled up all the gap between the two mountains with sheets of iron cold iron and then he started the fire and he started heating the iron until it was as hot as fire. Means until it melted. And then he poured on top of that the, the, the copper. And he made such a lorry, which is very hard to disintegrate, to dismantle. Allah said after that, The other side of the people, the Ajuj and the Majuj, they could never climb off it. And they could never dig from behind. So that's the man who is using power for goodness, for security of people. That's the man who is spreading justice. So what he said after that, and that's the conclusion, that's the gist of the, the lesson of the whole story. This is just a mercy from my Lord. This is a mercy from my Lord. What mercy he's talking about here? It is this, the the mercy of power in the right hand, in the just ruler. A just ruler is better for people than a lot and the abundance of provision. هذا رحمة من ربي. 
فإذا جاء وعد ربي when the fixed time the time fixed by my Lord comes all this will collapse and the, the promise of my Lord is true what does he mean by the promise of my Lord does it mean the day of judgment does it, does it mean a certain time when this when this wall will collapse Allahu A'lam so brothers that's another one and inshallah we'll have some more lessons to learn from this story uh, in the second session I'll call him what is my honor الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد رسول الله إمام المتقين اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع هديه إلى يوم الدين وبعد فكما قيل إمام عادل خير من مطر وابل الإمام العادل للأمة وللناس خير من كل خير من الخير الذي يسقه الله عز وجل للناس وكما قيل الناس على دين ملوكه يعني إذا كان الملك عادلا فأمته ورأيته بالعدل نفسه إذا كان عفيفا فهم كذلك وإذا كان ورعا تقيا فهم كذلك وقد ذكر أن الناس أن حديث الناس الذي كان يشغلهم في زمن عمر بن عبد العزيز هل صليت في المسجد هل أقمت الليل هل صمت الاثنين والخميس وأن حديثهم فيما من كان بعده كم جمعت من المال وكم ربحت تجارتك وهكذا So it is said a just ruler for the earth for all people, all humanity that's mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's better for people than a lot of the abundance of rizq that's actually the best rizq it is said also that people just follow the religion of their kings and rulers. They will be as good as they are. And some also reverse it, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَذَلِكَ Sometimes it's opposite, because it's just the one from the people who is ruling over them. Anyway, one of the scholars who supported the first one, he said, people at the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, in their conversation, what they were talking about is, did you pray? or not, did you pray, uh, did you do Qiyam or Layl, night prayer, last night, did you fast, Monday or Thursday, that's the mutual conversation among people at the time of such a good ruler, later, after him, people were talking to each other, how much you made, how much profit you did you make in this, in this business, how much money you have, how much money you save, so, anyway, we have no doubt that it's a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have someone who is advocating justice, justice as, as presented to us by the Quran and by the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is saying, يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَلَى مَنَاذِرَ مِنْ نُورِ الَّذِينَ يَعْدِلُونَ فِي حُكْمِهِمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ وَمَا وَلُوا أَوْ وَمَا غُلُوا The Prophet sallallahu said, the just the just will be on the day of judgment, will be on light bulbs. See, that's the honor. They'll be sitting on light bulbs and uh, pulpits. And they are, who are they? The Prophet said, these are the people who are just in their rulings, in their family and household, and whatever they are in charge of. So justice. And the Prophet said in the hadith, and seven will be given the shade of Allah on the day when there is no shade except his. And that is, one of them is Al-Imam Al-Adil. <coughs> Imam means a leader, means someone in charge. Could be yourself in your household. Could be yourself in the office. In the people you are in charge of, regardless. You have to be just with everyone. Muslim, non-Muslim. The one whom you love, the one whom you hate. You have to be just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha wa idha hakamtum bayna al-nasi an tahkumu bil-adl Indeed, Allah commands you to pay the trust back to its people. And when you rule, when you pass a ruling among people, not among Muslims, you are ruling between people, you have to pass a, rule, a just ruling. 
This man also, who has power in his hand, he knew this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have the example of Sulaiman alayhi salam. We have the opposite, Fir'aun. We have Al-Namrud. We have the other people. And we know the end for each one of these. You don't actually, if you read history, you'll see the end of the people who killed, who killed massively, human, who used their power to rise above others, and how, how they ended, how their life ended. So the justice is not only here, it's here, it's, it's in the hereafter, the absolute justice. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes justice for the hornless sheep from the horned one, because the horned one hit it with the, with the horn in this life before the hereafter. And we all know that justice is the most valuable missing value in our life these days. And we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we enjoy this and see it one day before we die. We can see kids, we can see women, our brother here, his wife lost five, five of her family members in Gaza. And that's just one example. And maybe some of us care, some don't care. But believe me, if you don't care, if you don't have the pain when you hear this news, you are losing your humanity. We are losing ourselves day by day because this can happen to any one of us any day. I'm talking about the human level. From the Islamic point of view, the Prophet ﷺ said, and we keep reminding, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ الْجَسَدِ الْوَاحِدِ The example of the believers in the way they show mutual mercy, empathy, how they sympathize with one another. Kindness is like one body. So do we feel like one body? That's the question. Nas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Yarf an Ahli Gaza Mahum fi. Allah Muhafif an Ahli Gaza Tamahum fi. Allah may know Kufatum Fahmilum. Allah may know Araya Faxum. Allah may know Morda Fadawi. Allah may know Jawa Fatimum. Allah may know Motlum Mura from Tasir Lahum. Allah may know Motlum Mura from Tasir Lahum. Allah Malaika Badwika Badwihim. Allah Mufar Yamahum. اللهم شتت شملهم اللهم اجعل بأسهم بينهم شديدة اللهم لا تطفع لهم رواية ولا تفقط لهم غاية واجعلهم يا ربنا عبرة وآية اللهم اجعلهم عبرة وآية اللهم منصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم منصر جندك يا رب العالمين اللهم منصر المجاهدين في فلسطين اللهم منصر المجاهدين في فلسطين اللهم ثبت على الحق أقدامهم اللهم ارفع رايتهم اللهم حقق غايتهم اللهم اجعلهم نكاية لعدوهم يا رب العالمين وشرد بهم من قطفهم يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتهد القربة وينعن عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه يزيدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم just before the إقامة one last reminder we had a complaint from the brothers uh, using the toilet here please try to keep it clean and dry the, the other people who use it we are not in a masjid here the other people who use it they don't have the culture of they don't, maybe they don't understand that we do wudu and when they come to know, they should come. They should know something positive about Muslims, all right? Apart from another side, which is security. I mean, safety. Your safety. When you go in, we don't want anyone to slip and then make a problem. So we have a complaint to the council actually. And please, so if you use it after, try to. If you have your socks before, you will do in the morning, and then you have your socks. You can just rub over your socks. If you open the water a little bit. If you don't open it so much, you will use less water and you'll make less mess if there is any mess at all. But when you open it like all the way, and then water will go everywhere. And that's not good for the safety of other brothers as well who come to do wudu. <laughs>